Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, a very persecuted uh, article here I am looking at from the Times of Israel by Dr. Michael Brown on his blog that he does there. Uh, Adam uh, Green, with No More News, brought this article to my attention. Uh, of course, the title of the article, Why You Should Support My Upcoming Debate with Rabbi Shmuley Botich. And uh, I really... Uh, uh, th there's just not the words that can express uh, my feelings about this article. Uh, I want to share with you, though, the, the main point uh, of the article here, and that is that uh, in the six points that uh, uh, Dr. Michael Brown will be taking in this debate against Rabbi Shmuley, he will be focusing on uh, six six topics, and of course, the sixth one is the one that really, uh, as I said, is very persecutive. Uh, it will be for the Christian community uh, if if these things, uh, the more that these things come out. And it states here, number six, in the light of horrible history of Christian anti-Semitism, it is imperative that we support uh, improved translations that will make it more difficult for Christians. Uh, anti-Semites to misuse their sacred text. Uh, I'm going to come back to that in just a moment here, uh, but uh, that, that's really something I wanted from the very beginning of the video to bring out. Dr. Michael Brown calling for improved translations because as he calls it, uh, you know, it, uh, make it to make it more difficult for Christian anti-Semites to misuse, again, their sacred text. Uh, makes you wonder, why does he put their in there? Why, do, why does he have to uh, say that right there, their sacred text? It's not your text as well, Dr. Brown? I mean, think about it. Um, you know, these things need to be brought out, friends, because we're living in a very serious time in, in modern days here. And so we've got to deal with the situation that is at hand. And, uh, you know, it's, it's truly a, a, a Hegelian dialectic all over again. They're creating this problem uh, and then they're going to come up with their own solution for it. So, again, there's a title of the article right there for you on the Times of Israel. Dr. Michael Brown, again, thank you, Adam Green, for sharing this with me. And, uh, uh, wow, uh, it, it, it's not good, friends, not good. Let's kind of examine some of the highlighted points in here, and then I need to share with you some things that are spoken by Yeshua, by Jesus himself, because uh, this whole premise that Christians have been anti-Semitic. Uh, now, I'm not going to deny the fact that uh, down through the centuries, we've had the uh, the Inquisition, Spanish Inquisition that was done. Uh, thousands of, uh, of Jews were put to death. Uh, but what Dr. Brown is not telling you is that it was Jewish rabbis who converted to Christianity and infiltrated the Catholic Church. They are the ones, in fact, it was a Jewish man that actually headed up the Spanish Inquisition. You guys know that because I've shared some of that with you. And uh, more and more we're finding infiltrations into the Catholic Church uh, by Jewish rabbis, as Rabbi Menachem Schneerson called them, turncoats, in order to bring about their objectives through Christianity. Now, I, I agree with one thing when it comes to the Vatican, though. It is the biggest source of idolatry in modern Christian history that we've ever had. So I'm not here to make the Catholic Church look like it's uh, some uh, saintly, uh, priestly uh, group of Christianity. And, but, but nonetheless, you got to keep in mind a lot of the evils that have happened towards the Jews have been perpetrated by Jews themselves. And it's normally the Jewish people that expose those things. Uh, you know, just like in that uh, incredible book from uh, the Holocaust Victims Accused, it is rabbis that expose the criminal acts of the Zionists and what they did to allow the deaths of almost a million Jews alone at their own hands. Uh, and so we're going to talk about these things. But anyway, 
not a long video today I'm gonna to really get into this deeper uh, later this week I, I want to come back to this whole story again but let me just kind of emphasize some more things here uh, he says here in the second part of the paragraph here on the screen for more uh, let me blow some of this up I want you guys to be able to see this really well so let me just see if I can get it up here bigger for you on the screen we all know that for more than 1,500 years, professing Christians have used the New Testament to de demonize the Jewish people, calling them the synagogue of Satan, alleging that they are of their father, the devil, branding them Christ killers, accusing them of decide. Listen, I come from a Jewish background. My family, 2,000 years ago, was not on the side of Yeshua, not on the side of Jesus whatsoever. And to, that's to our shame uh, that this has happened in our family. And, you know, I do know that, like in the case of Martin Luther and others, they very much were against the Jewish people. Uh, but you have to understand, too, like in the case of Martin Luther, Martin Luther was very much for the Jewish people in the very beginning. It wasn't until he got a hold of the Talmud that he really became got, got to the point where he did not like uh, Jewish rabbis because of seeing what was written in the Talmud and what uh, the that secret agenda was. Now, I know Dr. Michael Brown, he's also uh, an apologist for the Talmud as well. That's another thing that I see here in his uh, article here. And that's why I said we're going to have to come back to this once again. I need to address those things as well. But, you know, he says here, alleging that they are of their father, the devil. No, let me tell you something. Jesus is quoted saying that. But Jesus is not referring to all uh, uh, of the Jews as a whole. And, and I don't think ministers uh, do that as a whole either. In fact, when uh, Doc Burkhart on True News uh, was blasted recently as an anti-Semite for some of the comments he made, I wrote him personally and asked him, you know, I said, you're being called an anti-Semite. I said, no, my, I'm just my question to you personally, because I am a Jewish believer. Do you hate Jews? And I said, I don't think you do personally. I said, I think what you're against, in my opinion, is the Zionist agenda that is trying to dominate the world. That's not all Judaism. By no means. That's a select small group. And he wrote me back. He said, that's exactly right, Stephen. I'm just paraphrasing. He said, I'm not against the Jewish people at all, but I am against the Zionist movement that's trying to conquer this world, right? So let's let, let's take quickly, though. I want to look at this thing about the, about the part about the devil, right? That's right here in John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Who's he talking talking to let's let's back up and see all right uh, they say here they answered and said unto him Abraham is our father Jesus said uh, saith unto them if you were Abraham's children you would do the works of Abraham but now you seek to kill me a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God this did not Abraham Wow Ooh, that's exciting do you realize what Jesus is saying here? I told you the truth. You want to kill me. He's not talking about all of Judea at that time. He was talking to the Pharisees, the leaders there of the Pharisees. They were the ones that wanted to kill him. And he says, I told you the truth. What I heard of God, this, and, and then he said, this did not Abraham. You know, I'll tell you something. Uh, sometimes I think that even the Pharisees had a better revelation than some Christians do today. Watch what they say. You do the, uh, uh, he said, then he goes on. He says, ye do the deeds of your father. You got that? You do the deeds of your father. All right. That's why later he's going to say your father, the devil. Now, the word your is not there, but right here in verse 41, the your father is there. That's why they added the word your in verse 44. But watch this. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. 
they're trying to get out of this thing about fornication. Yes, they were born in fornication. They sure were. All right? Now, oh, I love it. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. All right? Now, i got to go back to that part about what he says. This did not Abraham. You, do you realize Jesus was claiming to be one of the three that came to Abraham? But he's not just claiming to be one of the three. He's telling you which one of those three he was. All right? He says, watch. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. What? What? Who was the one that told Abraham that Sarah laughed in the tent behind him? According to the scripture, it was God himself that said that. God, in the human body of a man, sitting there eating right there and drinking with Abraham and the other two angels. Abraham. He believed him. Okay? Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. Right? Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father. And we know it's your, like I said, because up here, right there. See? Right here in, uh, whoop, I can't, there we go. We know that because when he says you do the deeds of your father, all right, so by implication, the antecedent there, it would still be you are of your father, the devil. But Mr. Brown would have us believe that this is anti Semitic. More than 1,500 years, professing Christians have used the New Testament to demonize the Jewish people, calling them the synagogue of Satan, alleging, here's the day, this, this is the bad part, alleging that they are their father, the devil. Now, I'll give, I want to give Dr. Brown benefit of the doubt, all right? Because he professes to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I really appreciate that about Dr. Brown. All right, so... Perhaps what Dr. Brown is implying here, benefit of the doubt. So Dr. Brown, if you listen to this message, I really want you to understand. Perhaps in the times past, Christians have lumped all the Jews together and said they're of their father, the devil. I don't believe that either. I never have. Even though I know what the scripture says, and I know that Jesus clearly said to those leaders of the Pharisees there that they were of their father, the devil, you can't change that. And what's making that very difficult in modern times is because in modern days, you have Orthodox Jews that are saying that they are the descendants of the Pharisees. And what makes it even worse is the fact that I can take biblically and show you that the Pharisees were no doubt of a Nephilim bloodline. Again, though, it's not all Israel. It's not all the Jews. It wasn't all the Pharisees. Paul was a Pharisee. Although Rabbi Tobia Singer says he wasn't. You know, Rabbi Singer, you weren't there 2,000 years ago. Paul was. What's funny, though, they say Paul wasn't, but they say Jesus was, and yet Jesus is the one that really blasts the oral traditions more than anybody does. And then you think he's a Pharisee who were a Talmudist? Give me a break. Come on, guys. All right, now, another part of this here. Dr. Brown says here, and, uh, and today evangelical Christians worldwide are famous for their uh, philosemitic attitudes, yet of all Christians on the planet, these evangelicals are known for taking the Bible literally. Now, philosemitic, for those of you that do not know that, are those are Christians that, that have uh, uh, a love for the Jewish people. 
You know, I have a love for them because my desire, and I think Dr. Brown, I, I, well, I've heard him say it many times, his desire also is that they would know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Again, as something that we have in common, I appreciate that. And, you know, I want them not just to believe, I want them to recognize and see that he's the Messiah. And you can't do that, Dr. Brown, if you're going to be a Talmudic apologist when you know that Jesus was against it. All right, so let's, let's take a look at some more of the points here. All right, in the article, again, Dr. Michael Brown, tragically, and let's blow each one of these up because I want to make sure you guys can see this clear enough. Okay. Tragically, Christian anti-Semitism is raising its head again in our day from the Catholic scholar E. Michael Jones. I don't know E. Michael Jones whatsoever. Uh, to the online evangelical network True News. And he's talking about now Rick Wiles and and Doc Burkhardt and, and the other uh, the rest of the team there at True News. Well, I'll tell you though, True News, I, I don't say that I can agree with everything that, that uh, Rick uh, speaks about. Uh, I don't follow Rick's ministry. Uh, I don't follow True News. I do occasionally. I'll just check out something that they're speaking about. And I appreciate the fact that Rick is not afraid to speak from his heart about the evils that are going on in the world today. Because Dr. Brown, I mean, you you know, I, I don't see how. I mean, it's like it's like an ostrich sticking his head in the hole and just being blind to the world of what's happening around us. Uh, Rick has come out and really helped expose the seven Noahide laws of which you believe are perfectly okay. Now, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I also know that you said that you agreed it is Talmudic law, and you have agreed that, yes, the law against idolatry is also against Christians. It's just you kind of uh, make it look like it's never going to happen. And yet, we have taken on uh, the chats that me and my wife do, we have taken evidence after evidence after evidence, rabbi after rabbi after rabbi after rabbi, stating the very facts of what's going to happen. So I don't understand how it gets ignored. More tragically still, the Poway synagogue shooter cited passages from the New Testament to justify his Jew hatred along with other anti-Semitic tropes. Dr. Brown. Just because somebody quotes from the New Testament, you know, what about all the hatred against Christians? What about the, you know, uh, in fact, I was listening to one of your, your video messages that I think is actually linked on here. Uh, yeah, I think it's the one where you're talking about true news and you're doing an answer on there and you say uh, that there's this persecution doesn't exist on, let me just, let me, I, I need to play this for the people then. Let me, let me go to that. Um, those I had highlighted, so I, let's see, I need to go down to where you speak about this in the article there, because uh, I really would like to uh, show people some he things created here. The internet business um, that produced these checks. Get past the ads here. Rick Wiles wrote a book called Judgment. So this, this Jewish team, Here's Rick Wiles. They are Talmudists, they've converted. I mean, I would, I would laugh at this. If Hang on, let me back up. It, in all fairness, we need to include what Rick is saying here, and then I want to address what Dr. Brown says here. Let's listen to this. You think he's going to get special privileges? No, he's converted. I am convinced he's converted. He's I think he's a Talmud. They're talking about John Hagee right now, all right? They're talking about John Hagee. Notice. Oh, wait, where's the prayer shawl? I, 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 mean, I love all these this. guys on, on so-called Christian TV. It's not Christian TV anymore. It's, it's just it's, it's Jewish TV. They are Talmudists. They've converted. I, I mean, I would, I would laugh at this if not for the fact that people actually believe it. I would just be sarcastic with it if not for the fact that, that people actually believe it. So, number one, that is not what the Talmud teaches. The Talmud does not teach that Christians are supposed to be slaves of Jews. It does not teach that. Plain and simple. I will... Alright, I want to address that first. It does teach it. 
And Dr. Brown, I used to be part of the Chabad organization. I sat in many homes, many homes of other Jewish people as well as Jewish believers discussing the fact that the Goim are to serve the Jews. And, and then you sit there and deny that? I mean, maybe you've never been in the Chabad organization. And I don't say that all Orthodox Jews believe this, so I will clarify that as well. Although it's Talmudic, it doesn't mean that every Jew agrees with every Talmudic uh, precept, but I know they're supposed to because it is believed amongst Orthodox Jews. Uh, well, I guess you have to go to the Shulchan to, to get into that. Shulchan, uh, uh, that's more of the actual laws, but that's a different book altogether. But when it comes to the Talmud, the Talmud is just as important to Jews as the Torah is. All right? I know some people pretend like it's not, but if you want a good commentary on that, you guys that are listening, Nehemi Gordon, he also was an Orthodox Jew, um, and, you know, he really, really, really exposes uh, the issues about Talmudic beliefs inside of Judaism. But listen to a little bit more of this. Come on True News, gentlemen, and we will look at the Talmudic text. I'll, I'll have the Hebrew and Aramaic in front of me, and you can have verifiable English translations. And we'll look at the text together, and we'll see what they say. Will you do it? Well, if you're so sure that it's a fact, why won't you? You'll throw a quote up, take it out of context, or mistranslate it. All right, you won't let it be challenged. Why? Because that would burst your anti-Semitic bubble. So Christian TV is now Jewish TV. Isn't that utterly remarkable? Do Jews teach racial superiority? No, because Jews are not simply a race. There are many different peoples that have been part of the Jewish people over the centuries. We understand that. And, and the, the Moabites like Ruth that are part of our... Okay. Maybe what I should have done is taken some of the letters of friends of mine. I've got letters, Dr. Brown, from Orthodox Jews that are personal friends of mine that clearly write about these things that you're saying that do not exist in Judaism. But, again, I will say, that's not all Judaism. There are far more good Jews that just believe in equality. We have a lot of Jews in the Middle East that believe in equality. In fact, the ones that believe in equality do not want the war in Syria. But we have it anyway, right? I want you to listen a little bit more to what Dr. Brown says. Heritage. But is there a calling on Jewish people? The Jewish people believe there is a special calling and that God privileged the Jewish people with the Torah. Yes. And that they therefore have greater responsibility. But, but anyway, listen, I'll, I'll just play one more clip. Just to remind you that you cannot take these gentlemen seriously at all. Uh, listen to what Rick Wild said. You want to know how crazy these views are? Just go ahead and listen. You see how they play the game? Oh, they're they're victims. Mm. They're victims. Everybody's attacking them. We have to have laws to stop people from criticizing them, and yet they smear and attack Christians and do nothing to protect them, like in Aleppo, where Christians are being crucified on Israel's doorstep. What do you mean? That was, that was an Israeli operation. <laughs> Israel-funded and armed ISIS. I'm not so sure there was an ISIS. I, I'm not so sure that it was an entirely Israeli operation. Yeah, so there you have it, friends. The same fellow who wrote Judgment Day and was completely wrong, missed it 100%, and all the ridiculous position, predictions, none of them come to pass. It's the same one saying he doesn't even think ISIS existed. It was all an Israeli operation. Oh, and by the way, find out what Israeli is doing. Uh, Israelis are doing on the border of Syria on a daily basis to help the wounded and the hurting and risking their own lives to care for the people of Syria, including many Christians among them. But why get confused with facts when you are blatant anti-Semites? Rick Wiles, True News. All right, now... Let me clarify something also, Dr. Brown, on this right here. ISIS is a creation between Israel and the United States. 
That's not anti-Semitic. I sat right in the Galilee just a few years back with a good friend of mine, retired military, telling me that ISIS militants were known to wear the tzitzit. He was blown away by these facts. There, we have evidence, we have produced it, we have shown it on our broadcast, Israeli News Live, on multiple occasions there, just how serious the information is out there of who's training ISIS. And when you talk about Israel treating the wounded, these are not Syrians as you call them. These happen to be al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, militants, jihadists that are fighting to overthrow Bashar al-Assad, Sunni loyalists. Well, some of them might be Syrian citizens as well, sure. And it was actually an Israeli general that came out and admitted not only were we treating the wounded, but we were also arming them and giving them money to be able to buy weapons with as Israelis. All right. And as far as the Christians, we have Christians in Syria who follow Israeli News Live, and they have written us. We have two letters specifically saying that Christians stand with Bashar al-Assad because they know that the other, the United States, Israel, are backing the terrorists in the country and are killing the Christians there. And to say that, oh wow, there's no, nothing happens to the Christians, Israel is all for the Christians. Tell that to Carolyn Hyde in Ariel Hyde, the Hyde family in Israel, who are Christians. Tell that to Zev Parat. Christians living in Israel. Uh, you know, now I, I know in one place in this video you speak about how that there is a, you know, you know that there's, you know, there's persecution against the Orthodox community, against the Jew, uh, the Christian, uh, you know, the Messianic believers in Israel. But in, in reality, Carolyn Hyde, we had her here on Israeli News Live. She told us what her family was going through with the court system in Israel, wanting to deport them because of their faith in Yeshua. I have friends that are there that are Messianic believers that have been Jews that have lived there all their lives, fearful to speak a word because they said they'd be thrown out of the country. Don't make it look like anybody can do what they want. Sure, somebody like you, Dr. Brown, you know you've got a great ministry if you're backing uh, uh, the agenda of what's going on by the state of Israel then yeah, that's okay. I used to back the state of Israel as well. I was always invited to Knesset, was going to give my, was given uh, opportunity to do my citizenship without any questions asked. Why? So long as you back the Zionist agenda, you will have the backing of the Knesset. But the moment you begin to tell the truth because you care about your people that are Jews and you want them to know who the Messiah truly is, this is when you are in trouble with the state of Israel. So let's just tell it like it is. All right? Now, let's go back to the article and the things that are written therein. All right? Then we came to the to uh, to the points there. Actually, let me let me back up there and make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, now, he says here, I expect the Rabbi Shmuley will argue that Christians today should reject certain portions of the New Testament as uninspired and unworthy. Suspect? You already know what he's going to bring up. I know how debates work. You share the information on what you're going to do. Just like you wrote down your six points you will be making, you already have the points he's going to be making. It's not I expect you know that he is going to say that Christians should reject certain portions of the New Testament as uninspired and unworthy. Why? Majoring instead on true Christian love, we shall see what his exact approach will be. Yeah, his exact approach, because you don't know ex the exact approach that he's going to take there, but they're going to really go in and get the, uh, they're going to really not going to like the fact that uh, Yeshua, or they're going to say he's anti-Semitic, right? He's, so you said here, for my part, I will argue that, one, I'm going to look at number one and number six. 
Professing Christians have misused and abused certain passages in the New Testament to justify their anti-Semitism, just as they have misused and abused certain passages in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, to justify their hate. I thought the debate was supposed to be for standing for Christianity. You know, uh, granted, there have been Christians that have uh, abused the word of God to support anti-Semitism. I believe that. But I also know that unless you truly bring out, unless when you're sitting in this debate that you bring out Dr. Brown, that there were Jews that converted to, Jew, to, to Christianity with the intent to bring about harm to Jews so it could be blamed on Christianity, then you're doing a great uh, injustice to history. Now we're going to get to the heart of the matter. That, as I said, uh, troubling, of course, is normally my favorite word to use, but persecutive. I did highlight number five, so let's look at number five. For generations, anti-Semites have quoted selections from the Talmud accusing the rabbis of sanctioning every imaginable crime and perversity, yet it is only by misunderstanding these texts that they can be used to fuel the fires of anti-Semitism. It is the same with the New Testament writings. That's, uh, Dr. Brown, you're becoming a Talmudic apologist. I, now, I agree with you. I do know that people do misquote things from the Talmud as well. I understand that. But when we do our broadcast, we let the rabbis quote for themselves what the Talmud says. And a lot of these things are very accurate to some of these people you're causing, calling anti-Semites because they're trying to warn Christians of what's coming our way. Just as I have got a desire to want to win my people to Christ, I also have an obligation as a watchman for the body of Christ, both Jew and Gentile, to warn them of what's coming. And in fact, a very good friend of mine in Israel, who is an Israeli believer, he said, once the war with Iran comes, there will be a massive persecution against the believers of Israel. I don't know if he's right or not, but he could be. Number six, and this is the one that should be so concerning for every believer on the planet. In the light of horrible history of Christian anti-Semitism, it is imperative, it is imperative that we support improved translations that will make it more difficult for Christian anti-Semites to misuse their sacred text. Dr. Brown, improve translations. In other words, don't say what the Bible really says, right? Water it down so it makes everybody feel fuzzy inside. Is that what we're trying to get to? Let's take a look at what some of the things are that you would like to possibly uh, water down because it would be considered anti-Semitic. Maybe in this case here, when we look over here in Matthew chapter 16, for example, and we read right here, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. But let's back up to see who he's talking to. The Pharisees also with Sadducees came, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites! You can discern the face of the sky, but cannot ye? But excuse me, but cannot can ye not discern the signs of the times? Then he says to them, the Pharisees and some of the Sadducees. Now let's make sure we clarify that the Pharisees also with Sadducees came. Well, he didn't say some. He said the Pharisees and the Sadducees came, right? He called them a wicked, adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. 
There shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O oh, you of little faith, why reason you among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do you not understand neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and the many baskets you took up? Neither the seven loaves or the four thousand and the how many baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not, you concern, uh, not to you concerning the bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then they understood how that he bade them not to beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Talmudic doctrine. But what I wanted to focus on is just like what I highlighted. Yeshua said that they were a wicked and adulterous generation. Let me show you in the Hebrew Matthew, Shem Tob's Hebrew Matthew, what he really said. I want you to be able to see this. So we're going to blow it up bigger for you here on the screen. All right. Jesus answered them, hypocrites. Right. Now we go into, it goes in the same thing about the sky and all that kind of stuff. But when he gets to verse four, he said, the offspring of evildoers ask for a sign. <laughs> Let me tell you what he says in Hebrew. All right. Let me just show you here. Right here. Zorah ma, ma ra'im. Seeds of the evil one, or seeds from the evil ones, would be the way to translate that. Now, we know the word would be zara. Actually, no, it'd still be seed from evil ones. Zara ma, ma, uh, maraim. All right. Why is it a singular seed? It only took one fallen angel to create that bloodline. Looky there. You know, you like those original languages? Yeah, they do. They do help you really bring out some truths there that a lot of people don't want to see. So he says, now you can translate it. The offspring of evildoers ask for a sign, but no sign will be given them except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Then he was separated from them and went away. When Jesus came to the seashore, like, you know, we see what he says there, right? And uh, let me go down to where, okay. So beware, of course, of the leaven. Now, but the whole thing was that they were the offspring of evildoers, Dr. Brown. So when we have the adulterous generation, why does he call them a wicked and adulterous generation? Evil. But why is it called adulterous generation? Because according to the Hebrew Matthew, excuse me, the Hebrew Matthew on the same subject, it's called adulterous because they're the offspring of evildoers. The offspring of evildoers are children of the Nephilim. You understand now? Is this why you want to get removed? Because you're afraid it's too anti-Semitic? Well, maybe then we'd have problems too with Matthew 15. Again, I'll use the Hebrew Matthew. I just like the Hebrew Matthew as such. Uh, it's so compelling, the words that are used here. Then the sages and Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Why do your disciples transgress the ordinances of antiquity by not washing their hands before eating? That's nowhere in the Talmud, excuse me, the oral law of Moses. That's in the Talmud. Right? The ordinances of antiquity. Talmudic traditions, oral law. Jesus said to them, Why do you transgress the words of God because of your ordinances? Oh, but Dr. Brown, you're the apologist for those ordinances. That Jesus says that they their ordinances transgress the word of God. And you would be an apologist for this? Are you serious? For God said, 
Honor your father, your mother, and he who smites his father and mother will surely be put to death. But you say whatsoever a word a man should say to his father and his mother in regard to any donation he might give for him as a sinner, this iniquity itself will be made void to him. So he does not honor his father and his mother, the Ten Commandments itself. Right? And you despise the word of God by your ordinances. That's what Jesus has to say about your Talmudic traditions that you're willing to defend for them. You know, we're trying to get our Jewish brothers and sisters to recognize Christ and to recognize the Word of God was made manifest in this day, not to take Christians and plow them under a bunch of Talmudic traditions. No wonder why you want to retranslate the Bible, something a little bit more suitable Suitable for who? The Jewish people? What about Matthew 23 then? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe and mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weighter matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. You blind guys which strain at a net and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup, and the platter, but within, they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that uh, which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, of all uncleanliness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. <laughs> and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not, we would not, uh, let's see, where are we at there? We would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. You know, you should look at that one, Dr. Brown, in the Hebrew, Matthew. That one's really fascinating. Get down here. Let's go here. Right here, verse 30. Okay, so let's just blow this rascal up so that you can see this real clear. or at least better anyway. You say if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been permitted them to put the prophets to death. And this you bear witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who killed the prophets. That, that's pretty bold right there. You bore witness against yourselves. In other words, that's your daddies. No wonder why I said you're, you're of your father the devil. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers, serpents, seed of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? You know, he gave that space of repentance because he knew there were some amongst those Pharisees that were children. Now, we would not know this, Dr. Brown, if it wasn't for the verse 34 written in the Hebrew Matthew, because in the Greek Matthew, we don't get that first sentence. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, in other words, all those Jews around those leaders that were of the devil. Therefore, behold, I am sending to you prophets and sages and scribes. Some of them you will kill. Some of them you will afflict in your synagogues and you will pursue from city to city. In order, uh, in order to place upon you the blood of every righteous one which has been poured out upon the earth from the blood of Abel, the righteous, unto the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barkiah, whom you killed between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you that all these things will come to this generation, and upon Jerusalem who kills the prophets, removes those who are sent. How many times I wish to gather your children as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Therefore, you will leave your houses desolate. Truly, I say to you, you will not see me henceforth until you will say, Blessed is our Savior. Or as King James says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
You see, he could only say this about how often he would have hovered them because he did what in verse 34? At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, he knew, just like it was in the case when Israel came out of, the, uh, out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude. We, were, we are dealing in that Pharisaic line, even as Jude brings out, um, or is it Ezra? No, Jude. Jude brings it out in his epistle. They'd crept in among us. I said, we'll save that for another time. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I trust this is a blessing to you. I know it's very difficult to hear this, and it's very sad. Uh, I, you know, I'd tell you, pray for Dr. Brown. Pray that, that he will come on the right side. Because right now, being a, a Talmudic apologist and, you know, and, and, and uh, supporting improved translation of the Bible, that's very concerning. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you. Thank you for those of you that support this ministry. We greatly appreciate your help. Uh, in keeping this ministry alive. Uh, you can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. All the information you need to know is right there. And also, uh, just as a reminder, those of you that uh, are planning to come to the Orlando Conference are on our website. Go to Orlando Conference, August 17th, 2019. The truth shall set you free. I will update the information in here when I can get a chance to do so. I'll take out Deanna out of there as a speaker, uh, adjust the times on the conference. Uh, the conference still will begin at 9.30 a.m. And uh, so we do look forward to seeing you there. And uh, we'll have a break at lunchtime. My wife will speak after lunchtime. And uh, she'll actually take Deanne's spot at 1.30. Uh, and then I'll take you on a spot uh, probably closer to 4 o'clock. And then uh, we'll adjust the times on that, though. Uh, and... I, I trust it will be a blessing to you. Again, there's no charge for it. The address is there on the website at the Embassy Suites by Hilton, where we've been holding it for the last couple of years there. And uh, also, be sure, put a comment on this uh, web on this post here, because we need to know that you're coming, and the only way we can uh, make sure we don't overflow this facility is to have an accurate count of those that are coming uh, to the conference. Thank you, and God bless you for watching. Shalom.